Hi, it's Kerry here. I'm ready for a Tuesday chat. I'm just waiting on this computer to fire up. And, um, hopefully it's all working. Let's keep our fingers crossed. It all looks good. Wow. <laughs> it's always a relief when things work, especially anything to do with tech. <coughs> okay, so um, welcome to Tuesday chat. It's our second month of the year. Uh, last week we talked about goal setting, of course, because it's um, January, start of 2024. Um, but this week I'm totally changing that up and we're not talking about goals or anything like that. Um, I want to talk about uh, animal anatomy. So as a, an animal artist, I thought um, we could have a chat about um, improving drawing skills. Um, I hope everyone's been having a wonderful time. I'm just um, going to let some people get on and then um, we'll get stuck into this discussion. <coughs> mm, I should have grabbed some water. All right, hi, Jenny, Jennifer, Dad. Um, all the regulars are getting on, which is amazing. Um, I need to, I realise I haven't set this up as an event for this year. It, all my events stopped last year, so I need to get that organized so that um, you can like the event and then you'll get reminders for it. So, um, all right, I think that's probably it for now. We might have a few more join, but of course, um, most people watch the recording of the Tuesday chats. So, oh, it dies on too. Hi, Di. Um, so today I wanted to have a little chat about um, improving your drawing skills through studying animal anatomy um, and gesture drawing. So we'll probably go into this a bit more uh, in the membership as well. Um, on tonight, for anyone in the membership who's on, and we'll, I'll talk about this a bit more in detail, and I want to put to you guys if there's something, uh, an extra thing you want to do. I know I make you do so many things in the membership, but it's just an idea. Anyway, we'll discuss that tonight. All right. Um, so, of course, being an animal artist, a wildlife artist, um, I'm going to talk about studying animal anatomy, but um, if you're a portraiture artist uh, working with people, then of course you would do exactly the same thing, but study human um, anatomy. And um, I'll show you in some of these books, they're, they're comparable, and it's a good idea to relate a human body to an animal body it just makes it a bit easier to figure it out where things go um, myself I have no idea and this is something I need to do it's probably um, it's not written on my goals um, for this year but it's definitely something I want to start doing more and more of um, just getting a bit more familiar with uh, with the animals anatomy because then it of course it makes it easy to draw it draw things and also um, you know, sometimes you, you can take all your own photos at zoos and all the rest of it, but sometimes if you're putting a composition together and the animal's head's not quite the way you want it or, you know, its body's not quite in the right position, um, if you can get really good at drawing and, and um, learning all of this, then of course you can draw whatever you want and put it in whatever position you want. So, um, you know, it's, all, it's always a struggle to get what's in a head down onto paper, but the better you get at um, drawing, then the better you're going to be at doing that. But in saying that, learning to draw takes years and years of practice. Okay, so it's not something that's going to happen overnight. You're going to have that many drawings you hate, you're going to want to chuck out, but I'd advise you to keep a lot just to refer back to. Um, but inside of my membership, the Creative Barn, you can see behind me, there are a lot of the tutorials I teach. So I don't essentially teach how to draw in the membership. The membership is more about um, learning, learning how to use pastel, charcoal and graphite, but learning how to observe and see colours, um, how to do realism, how to see the values that makes things look real, um, all of that sort of stuff. So we use line art a, a lot in the membership um, because I'm not 
to learn to draw, like I said, takes years of practice. So in my membership, I, I don't care if you can draw or not. Like, I want you to be really proud of your finished work. So I encourage people, I encourage all my students to do sketching practice, go out in nature and wander around and do some sketching. Um, in the fundamental lessons, I show how to use the scale tool so they can um, draw from scratch just using the scale tool and no line art. Um, but essentially, if you start with line art, you're going to end up with a, a beautiful painting that's in proportion. So it doesn't bother me in the slightest if you use line art the whole way through your career. There's amazing artists out there that, that use line art. They just use their own photos. But if you want to take your art that bit further, not, not further career-wise, because you don't need to um, learn to draw from scratch for your career, but for you to be able to come up with complete, like your own compositions, like I said earlier, um, being able to put that, what's in your head onto paper, then that's where you do need to probably learn um, the drawing skills more. So, and this is um, a great way to get started in that. Okay, so um, first of all, um, you, you sort of need, I suppose you need a good understanding. This is why it takes years. <laughs> My daughter's become a vet and she's done five years of study of animal structure. So she'd probably be really great at drawing from scratch because she sort of knows it. But um, myself, I haven't studied any animal structure other than just observing myself when I go to the zoo or, or watching the dogs or the farm animals muck around and play and everything. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's, it's over my head. But... It's something, like I said, I want to sort of start to get into more and learn more. So um, I suppose you need to, first of all, sort of get familiar with the skeletal structure um, and the muscles and all of that of the animals. And I know it, that sort of is a bit boring, I suppose, <laughs> to most artists. But if you turn it into sketching practice, then maybe it's not not that boring. So um, um you, there's some different things I found on the internet that can help with this as well. So, um, first of all, I wanted to share um, a few anatomy books that I've discovered that um, I think would be a really good asset to your library. Um, so, I, I actually have one. Now this one is called Bird Anatomy for Artists and it's by Natalia Barlow. She lives, I bought it from her direct actually. Um, at Redcliffe in Brisbane, so she must live locally, like in, in Queensland. But um, this one is all about, like, she's, this is just the front page. There's beautiful drawings in here. Um, but, you know, she's been studying birds, and this book is just about birds. So you could, you could just, if, if that was birds was your thing, then you could hone that study down to just one animal, which is probably... Um, probably smarter to get started with. So maybe big cats, if that's your thing, or, or just birds, rather than trying to learn the anatomy of every different animal. Um, but in saying that, I suppose uh, four-legged animals would be one because their bone structure is probably similar. Um, but birds, um, essentially, so you can see she's just been doing a lot of study to create a book like this. But I just thought I would share a couple of pages um, where I was saying you can compare, even with birds, which I thought was pretty funny, you can compare a uh, human skeletal structure to a bird structure, uh, which is what a lot of these books sort of seem to do. Um, and I think it's because it, it can sit better in our heads learning if we, because we all kind of know the basics of our own body of the own human skeleton. So um, I think if you can compare, right, where are the shoulders on a bird, say, or a mammal, um, uh, where's the spine, where's the parts of the arm, all of that sort of stuff. So like with the birds, they, um, like, like in this one, I don't know if you can read this, but it shows on the bird, the elbow, the wrist, the knee, the hip, the ankle, so they've sort of turned the different um, structure or bones and joints into where they would be on the human, like 
and call them the human ones as well. Okay, so, and it's quite funny, the ankle on a bird, I always thought the ankle would be down here on a bird, but it's actually up here. And that's the foot, I suppose, and they're the toes. So it's really funny when you think about, when you put it into um, context like that, I think it's pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, this one's another great picture of, um, you know, comparing the, the bone structure there to the finished drawing. So, like I said, once you sort of know where everything is placed, you can turn the head without any problem. You, you can do it all and um, create your own drawing. So, like I said, that's a really great book. I'm not sure, like I said, I bought it from the artist, so I'm not sure if this one is just on um, Amazon or Booktopia or anything. Um, all of these books are pretty expensive too, but um, it's definitely one to look look up if you're interested in bird anatomy. So I might type that in, bird anatomy for artists. I'll write her name down. Let me just put it in the comments. Um, just see if anyone's interested. Beautiful artist by Talia Barlow. Okay, so that's the bird book there. Um, I know it's pretty heavy reading. <laughs> Starting, I haven't read this. I like looking at the pictures, but um, if you want to yeah, get better at drawing, you've got to start at the basics so you've got to learn the, the structures of the bones and the muscles and all of that. Um, <clears throat> now, I was going to share my screen, but I forgot to come into this through Zoom, so I'm not going to be able to share the screen unfortunately, but um, there was another animal anatomy book I found called Anim Animal Anatomy for Artists by Elliot Goldfinger. I'll write that one in as well. Um, animal Anatomy. Actually, I'll share the link. This one's, I found it in, on Booktopia. So this one, you can probably find other places as well. But this one, I wanted to share my um, page because um, I, I'm really annoyed with myself. I didn't come in by Zoom <clears throat> so I could share my page. That's the problem with Facebook. You can't share your page once you've started. Um, but the Animal Anatomy for Artists, it goes into, um, I haven't got this book myself, but I was looking, if you go onto that link, you can see more of the book and it opens up part of the book and um, it breaks the animal down into shape. So um, I mean, it does a lot more than that, but it makes it a bit easier to see. So once you've sort of got familiar with the skeleton structure and that, then, um, then the next step is to try and break, look at the animal in, in terms of shape. You may have seen like when people do quick drawings, They'll do an, a circle or oval for the head, then a square or rectangle for the hips, maybe in shoulders, and then maybe another oval for the trunk section of the animal. So um, they, you break it down into shapes and it makes it a lot easier. Like I said, this takes time and practice to get good at this, but this uh, is sort of where to get started. So first off, I'd be looking at these books. Um, whether online or actually buy them in person. Maybe try copying the sketches in there. Um, copying for an artist is how we learn. Like we, a lot of art schools and um, artists start off copying the masters, but learning skeletal structures and all that, then you can copy straight out of books. They're not, you're not selling the pieces, so you can definitely copy and just get familiar with, with shapes and, um, and what, how you can break it down. Okay, so most bodies can, this is where I want to share my screen, you can, like I said, get like different ovals and circles for the head and, and then um, like if you did life drawing classes, you'll know usually they, um, for a shoulder, you do a line which can then become like a, a rectangle and then the spine, you get that in, so that's usually a curved line and then the hip line, which again is another rectangle and then the... Um, the legs can be like triangles and um, working into shapes like that and you just, just work really lightly and then um, get darker. 
as you get more confident. So once you you work really light with your drawing, and then um, as you figure out, all right, that is in the right place, then I think I'll be darker on there. <clears throat> oh, hi, Karen and Sandra. All right. Um, so then I suppose once you've got familiar with, with that, then I would move on to the muscles and the movement of the animal. Okay, so, um, so looking at the large muscles and that of the animal, how it joins the bones together. Um, because it is kind of, I suppose, we don't really see the bones as such when we're drawing an animal, uh, but we definitely would see the muscle structure underneath. Okay, so that's a, probably just as important as the bone structure is how the muscles are. And especially when we then start to look at movement, we, um, it's the muscles that, of course, make us move. Um, so understanding that. And then once you've kind of got, I mean, you could just study this first. If you were planning a day out at the zoo and you wanted to look at big cats, then maybe go through and study, you know, the day before and look at the bone structure and the muscle structure, all of that, before you even go to the zoo to observe the animal. Um, because if you've got that in the back of your mind or you've done some sketching, then it, it helps you to see, to observe what you want to see. So, um, so, and I would also, if I was going to the zoo, I would, like, don't go to the zoo just as a tourist to go to the zoo with the kids. Go to the zoo as an artist to study um, and observe the animals that you want to, that you want to paint. Like, and maybe rather than all the animals, maybe just pick a couple that you really want to, that you love and you, it's easy to draw something you love, <laughs> there's something you hate. So pick a couple that you really love and go there with the intent to study and observe. Okay, so, um, and whether that's the zoo or even just watching videos, um, you can still observe, if you can't get to a zoo, you can still observe um, on YouTube, watching videos of animals, of course, so. All right, diet. Finding shapes in pictures is a great way to draw. I used this strategy with my kindergarten kids and it was surprising how well their pictures turned out. Yeah, exactly. And again, every it's, it's practice and it's time put in. Like this is, I'm talking years here. Um, some people get through a lot quicker because if you've got the time to draw every day <clears throat> and do this type of sketching and practice, then of course you'll probably be brilliant at it within a year but for a lot of us that don't have as much time um, and we I would still try and fit at least one time a week into doing some just freehand sketching then yeah it, it's a it's a slow process but the beauty is the better you, the more you do it the better you get um, it's the same as any skill so um, but yeah and, and especially breaking it down I think if you've got the steps because at first you just think um, oh yeah, it's too hard, I can't draw. <laughs> but if you break down and, and study, all the people that can draw have gone through all this, of course, and um, spent a lot of time. So if we figure out our bone structures and our muscle structures, break it into shapes, um, you'll soon learn what shapes go where, and there's plenty of stuff online to help with that. And like I said, these animal books do that. Um, the anatomy books, they break things down for you. So you can see it a bit easier. Um, so yeah, so observing and also, you know, watch how the muscles contract and expand while like say a, a lion's walking um, or a horse is sort of rearing up or things like that. Just actually look at those things because I know artists do see things differently. I always talk about that. Um, but it's something you've got to get your head into. The more, like, as a beginner, you don't. That's something that comes with you more and more. Um, but you just need to go with that intent of looking at it and remind yourself, hang on, I'm not just looking at how beautiful this animal is. I'm actually trying to study the movement and, and how the muscles are working, things like that. So, um, all right. So, what was that? Understanding muscle and movement. Okay, and then... Like I keep saying, practice, practice, practice. So it takes time and practice. And yeah, if you can, I suppose it's kind of a little bit with our goal setting last week. If you can put in even half an hour a week of doing some sort of sketching uh, would 
would really help and improve your drawing skills. Um, so a way to practice is of course gesture drawing, which again I wanted to share my screen because I do have I had some really great um, videos uh, on YouTube to share with everyone, but I'll just put the links in there and you can check them out. Um, and with you guys tonight, my members, um, I will I will share this other one I wanted to talk to you about about gesture drawing as well. So um, no, Jeanette, I'm at um, nine. Tuesday chat's nine. I think I've got it right. <laughs> and yes, Karen, very true about loving what you're drawing. That's really important, I think. Um, okay, so gesture drawing. Um, so gesture drawing, if you're not sure what that is, it's it's quick sketches. So um, and and kind of a lot of them are timed, a bit like uh, life drawing as well. But gesture drawing is trying to capture the movement of an animal. So again, you start off light, just sketching, and then as you're getting more confident in where that um, where you've got that position, you can go a bit harder. Um, and it's a, there's all different reasons for ge why gesture drawing is good. I'll go through some. So it teaches you to look and be confident, um, confident and bold in your strokes. Um, it teaches you stroke direction. Um, you can you learn to work big to small. So by squinting your eyes, it's always a good idea, good way to see the larger shapes. So. Um, it's how a lot of artists do work this way, large to small or messy to refine sort of thing. So you, you start off really loose and then you come into those details. Um, starting very light, gradually increase the pressure as you're more confident, that's what I said before. Um, look for the major masses, so the big shapes first. Um, uh, landmark, so... Um, Things like, say, if you were doing a big fluffy cat, the landmarks would maybe be the ears um, or some sort of a bone that's maybe um, more noticeable. And then with once you find a landmark, you can then sort of work out distances and that off of that, that particular um, place. Uh, it's great for capturing character um, and... It's, it's funny, when you first start drawing, you're trying to draw, you always try and draw an outline. <laughs> and um, there's, the, we don't really have outlines. I suppose you can see my arm looks like an outline, but we all know that it's rounded. So it's just sort of um, how our eye perceives things. But when you're drawing, it's best not to try and draw an outline. Um, and especially in gesture drawing, so you sort of start with, like we were saying, sort of shapes and, and movement and, um, you know, I always try and start with looking where the spine would be, or the backbone, and then a few different angles. But gesture drawing, um, it's very quick as well. It's a good way to um, warm yourself up to doing a drawing. That's why a lot of them start with like 10 second poses and then um, go to 30 seconds, and then a minute, and then five minutes. And um, so you could even use, do it regularly. If you're gonna sit down and do some drawing, or painting, or whatever, if you wanted to get yourself warmed up, you could just do 10 minutes first. It's a bit like stretching, I suppose, before you go for a run. Just do 10 minutes of gesture drawing first to just sort of get your hand-eye coordination happening, and um, just get your yourself warmed up ready to go so um, there was a few like I said videos here I wanted to share um, let me copy and paste that um, this first one is a really good one they just they're sketching cats in it so but it, it's really good they really go into detail talking about what to look for, um, you know, why, why it's good to do gesture drawing and how simple it can be just if you've got a cat just to sit down and sketch your cat. It, you don't have to go outside, you don't have to 
go to the zoo or anything like that. You can just sketch things, animals around you. Essentially, you want things that are moving is a good idea as well. But I mean, of course, if a cat's laying still, I would probably start with the animal while it's asleep to, to get practice at that. And then maybe um, start doing some quick sketches as they're walking around and moving. Um, because moving is quite difficult to sketch. Um, copy this one as well. It's from the same mob. Uh, they're called Art Prof. We've got some amazing videos. This one's a really good one. It is timed drawing sessions. So uh, what you can do is you just go on to there. They've got all different types of animals. So like they've got time drawing exercise of squirrels, two minute poses. So every two minutes it changes to a different squirrel photo. Um, there's another one here. I saw um, timed image references of chickens. So they're two to 10 minute poses. So they would start off at two minutes and then work up to, to 10, 10 minute poses. So like I said, most gesture drawing, you start off quick and then you sort of start to settle into it and get a bit longer. So that's a that's just a really great um, uh, video library to save actually, because uh, they just have heaps and heaps of um, just like photos that change for you. It's this called daily drawing practice, I think daily life drawing. But um, they're all animals. They they do do humans as well. And then of course. Um, if you haven't heard of Aaron Blaze, he's absolutely amazing. He's a um, he's an animator, and he works. He did all like he worked on um, the Lion King, Brother Bear, all that. He knows his stuff. He's been doing it thirty odd years, so he's been studying animals for that long. So now, of course, when you watch him sketch, he can just. Um, sit and sketch and, and get the shape and he can, because he's an animator, he can put these animals in any position he wants. Um, but that's come with years and years of practice. But Aaron is, um, he's got this, <clears throat> he's got a couple of YouTube videos on um, gesture drawing. So they're, um, they go for an hour or two. So definitely one to sit down and have a couple with, but um, well worth checking out. Aaron is quite amazing. Um, Sam, your parrot would be kind of brilliant to try and, and do gesture drawing um, because, yeah, I, I understand parrots do move a lot. But I would just, yeah, if you can get that, that line of the back straight down to the tail, a beak, so just a couple of lines, and then maybe when he moves, another couple of lines, just try and pick just a couple of bits that, um, that are standing out to you. And then, um, then maybe you'd have to, oh, maybe when he's a slave boy, you'd have to go online and look for, or take a photo of him if you want a, a pose where he's sitting still for longer. So, uh, Karen, yeah, definitely worth checking out. Check Aaron out. His stuff's pretty amazing. Um, he does do, he, he does charcoal drawing. He's an animator, so he does a lot of digital drawing. But he does do um, like charcoal and, and um, real life stuff. And he's got some great, I, I shared a video in the membership of him at the zoo uh, doing some gesture drawing, which was really cool. Okay, and then I found this other one. Uh, it's a website, which this was the one I'm going to share tonight with all my members. Um, it's called Line of Action. And what you do, you just pick um, what you want to draw. So if you want to do all mammals, it's got all mammals, feline, canine, equine, birds, insects, rodent, aquatic, primates, reptiles. So you pick what type of animal you want to draw. So if I went all mammals, maybe. And then you pick if you want it to include the skeleton or only show the live animals. So I think... If you want to practice your skeletal drawing, then maybe that would be the way to go. Or if you want to just do your gesture drawing, then um, I just click only show live animals. 
what kind of session. So um, all the same length or class mode is where they start off shorter and go through. So, um, and it asks how long the class, so 30 minutes. And then you just hit get drawing and it brings up on your screen the most amazing photos. This is what I want to share of um, animals and there, there's a timer. So the 30 seconds and it, show, it does 10 30 second ones and it tells you that. So every 30 seconds it changes to the next one. So it starts off quick and then after those 10 it will give you some longer ones. Um, but yeah, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So I can't wait to share that. I really wish I'd shared my screen. So anyway, um, if you're in my membership, what and you'll get to see this tonight. But go on yourself and have a play with it. Um, really, really cool. So it sounds stressful. <laughs> it is, Karen, but it's a great way to loosen up. I know when we're all trying to sketch, don't have a bit of paper here. You know, I know myself, when I'm trying to sketch something, I'll sit here and do like these little lines, you know, and try and create a, a picture like this, doing little tiny lines everywhere. Whereas if you've got 30 seconds, you're then going to do big lines like this, you know, and just, it's really got to get your whole shoulder moving. It's, I love doing gesture drawing in charcoal, in just a charcoal stick, because you really sort of, and on big paper, of course, <laughs> get those, um, those, that movement, because that's what it's all about, is trying to capture the movement as well. Um, but you could use colour, coloured pencils are probably pretty good as well, because um, if you're doing it in a sketchbook, and that way, because of course with charcoal, it's going to get pretty messy, but coloured pencils, um, you could use a sketchbook, I don't really have a pencil here around me, which is very strange, usually I have pencils everywhere. But again, don't hold, you're not holding, you're probably not holding your pencil like that. You're probably more holding like this and moving, you know, your whole arm. Because you want, want to work really loose. Because like I said, uh, you're working really loose to start with and messy and light. And then as those poses get longer, you're warmed up a bit from doing the 10 seconds, 30 second ones. Uh, or 30 seconds, I think is the shortest. So you're kind of getting a bit warmed up and then by the time you get to like a five minute pose, um, then you can start to really have the time to get more details, sort of face details and all of that. Because you're not really too concerned with the faces when you're first doing those short ones. It's more the, the big masses and the, the, you know, the circles of the head and the over for the trunk of the animal. So. Uh, what it, I watch, was watching that one on Aaron, Aaron's um, gesture drawing one and he was saying he breaks it down. It's worth going and watching this actually. To the head, so the head is like a circle, then the neck is like a cylinder, shoulders, um, shoulder and so say a four-legged animal, shoulder and down to the leg and then the trunk, and then the pelvis and down to the leg and then the sort of tail. Uh, so it's sort of into six sections and then like I thought this is a good way to think about it he said that he then knows what is a rigid area and what is a flexible area so say the head is rigid it's like hard bone whereas the neck is um, flexible so it can move and that's where you get your movement from the neck area and then the shoulders down to leg is is rigid whereas the trunk again is um, flexible and then your hips pelvis hips down is rigid and then of course the tail is flexible so like he was saying um, when you're drawing you know how a head will turn because you know it's only the neck that's flexible the same with the body the torso or trunk is flexible um, so it's some great tips like that you're always learning so um, Hold on, I'm trying to. Oh. I'm just reading some comments. That lives in Bowen for 20 years. We used to keep our copy papers eventually covered with all white. Love the, 
I love the life drawing when I lived in the city. Love the sharing some some more online drawing sessions. Oh, that's good, Sam. I must have missed the Byron. <laughs> Hold on, maybe if I go further up. Oh, here we go. I'm in Byron Shire and I'm wondering how do you stop paper and pastel mat from getting damp? I ran and everything's so damp at the moment. Yeah, it's so humid, honestly. Um, my studio, Sam, is in the garage. So I have this little portable air conditioner uh, which hardly works. So I'm always red in these <laughs> lives. Um, so I haven't had that trouble. I don't know why. Um, it's humid as anything up here. I'm um, north of Brisbane. Um, it's around the Harvey Bay sort of Fraser Coast area and it's so humid today is a shocker um, what has Di got ventilator covered I don't know I don't yeah like I said I haven't had that trouble but yeah definitely maybe because I have a big garage door so air can get in a bit I'm not sure not sure um, Karen artist mannequin Why have you got, I think, hold on, I think this is what you might need, hold on. You mean one of these? So I think this is what I would maybe call an artist mannequin. Um, I think you can probably get them in um, animals as well, maybe. But yeah, it's very, very basic, but... Um, I suppose it, I don't know, it sort of moves around. I think, is that what you mean? Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so I suppose this kind of, if you've got something like that, um, that would maybe give you some ideas as well. But, um, yeah, so, but anyway, so these, there's so many things online. I mean, YouTube is amazing for learning anything. Uh, yes, for movement. Okay, sorry, Karen. Yes. So, I suppose when you talk about, when Aaron talks about how the neck and the trunk is flexible and the rest are rigid, it's very true because when you look at that, it's the movement is coming from the neck. The same with up here. The movement is coming from the trunk, like around the waist area, isn't it? Whereas these are rigid, sort of up the shoulders, pelvis. Um, that sort of thing. So yeah, um, yeah. So definitely check out. I've shared all those links. Definitely check them out. Um, yeah, if you've never seen anything of Aaron Blaze, go and check him out as well. He shares so much. It's really great resources. Um, and then yeah, for those in my membership, I'll I will share my screen tonight, and um, I definitely want to show you and talk about that. Um, the line of action one because it's really really good um, so it's something we might be able to incorporate into the membership so we'll see we'll see we'll see okay um, so I think that was pretty much everything I wanted to share I'm just checking all of these out um, but yeah the main takeaway is you have to make bad drawings to make good drawings so don't um, worry about what these look like these are not things that you're sharing they're just for you um, to improve your drawing skills if if that's the way you want to go like I said um, you can be an amazing artist and not know how to draw you can use line art you know, the whole time but my only advice with that as my members know is as you get better at, at drawing and, and or learning how to um, use your chosen medium, definitely use your own photos as reference images or always use copyright free, but if you can use your own uh, in most of your compositions, that's how I would go with that. But I think just learning to draw, don't think of it as something you need to do, like you need to be able to draw from scratch um, straight away or you can't draw ever <laughs> it's something that will work along with 
the rest of your um, sort of art practice. And over time, you'll just get better and better at it. And um, yeah, and these are just some fun little things you can do. Um, yes, Karen, definitely more fun using your own photos because you're more invested, I think, and more excited about the outcome and prouder of, of your work because you created something from nothing. You know, something that didn't exist before, you've created that. Totally, it's come out of your head, out of your, um, your vision, and um, yeah, it's, it's the best way to go for sure. All right. Thank you, Sam. With your high-level course, when do you go live? Oh, Vivian, in um, the premium tier, which I did need to share that, actually, the doors to the premium tier of the Creative Barn are opening. I wear, right, I'm doing a coaching week or challenge week from the 29th of January till the 4th of Feb, so that's Monday to Sunday, um, and that's the premium tier. It only opens a couple of times a year, and I go live in that a lot. <laughs> Every Wednesday, we do a creative play where we all just get together on Zoom and do our own thing. It's just a one-hour accountability type of thing. Um, if you're struggling to sort of do creative time, then that's a way to sort of to get focused and do it. So I'm not actually teaching that, but that's every Wednesday. Then once a month we do our Zoom draw along session. And then um, we also do a Zoom art chat uh, once a month. And then um, once a month I do a Facebook Live where it's a QA. and uh, I run through what's happening in the month. And I also draw the bingo. We play for a $50 Amazon, va Amazon voucher every month in bingo so there's so much fun happens in the in the premium tier so um yeah and those lives depending where you are the the draw alongs are usually on a friday night seven o'clock my time the art chats usually on a sunday morning nine o'clock my time and the creative plays are nine o'clock in the morning my time but i do change the draw along up with the art chat every so often um, just for those in different time zones because I have students all over the world so it's really hard to get the time zones right but everything is recorded so you can always watch it but anyway so our challenge week which is free for anyone to do um, we are going to do cat I wanted to go through the three mediums I teach so this is a graphite drawing of a cat's eye. So it'll be a recorded tutorial, recorded lesson you'll get access to on day one. Then day two, I think it is, is a cat's eye in charcoal. So that'll be another recorded tutorial. And then on the, I'm not sure what day it is. Um, I'm gonna release the schedule and equipment list in the next day or two. Um, this is not a drawing, this one. This is the reference image. We're gonna do a draw along in pastel. Um, so this one I'll draw with everyone else. Um, so that'll be a live Zoom. A live Zoom, well, I don't know. It depends how many people. It might not be a Zoom. It might end up being just me going live. Um, I just don't know if a Zoom will work with like lots and lots of people. So um, anyway, I'll figure that out. <laughs> so. So the challenge is doing a cat's eye in graphite, cat's eye in charcoal, and then a cat's eye in pastel. And they're the three mediums I teach inside the membership. So, <clears throat> so that I'll get more info out. I'm going to do a pop-up Facebook group for that because I, I sometimes have been running them in my public group, which is Drawing Wildlife and Nature Beginners to Advance. But there's now 7,000 people in that group. Um, and last time I ran ran this I had a lot of people not but even though I pinned them and I had a guide and all the rest to the videos the recordings because other people are posting different things of course um, it was getting a bit lost so I'm gonna do a pop-up group so um, it'll just be that a Facebook group just for the challenge um, and then it'll shut down afterwards uh, that way you can go in that group and everything in there is to do with the challenge so I think it'll just be a little bit easier to follow um, and ask questions and, and share your work and all that. And it won't get lost in, in everything else. So, all right, guys. Um, so I think that is it. And um, 
like I said, go and check out some of those links I've put in there. Uh, I think you'll um, really learn a lot and love them. And um, yeah, so no problem. All right. And yeah, I'll um, see those that are in the membership tonight with the Q&A. Um, otherwise, I'll see you all next Tuesday for um, next week's Tuesday chat. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.